Well, thank you all for joining us. We're really excited um, that you're all here and for everyone online as well. Um, I'm Trisha Dolly. And I'm Louise Jones. And we're gonna share um, about Lean UX and Agile. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, there, we're gonna talk about a couple different types of Agile, um, get into the details of Lean UX, and then go over some ways that we can put it into action in our projects. Um, so in our busy, fast-paced world of sprints, increment planning, retros, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so in our busy, fast-paced, agile world um, of sprint planning, inc uh, retros, uh, stand-ups, backlog refinement, um, and then all the day-to-day -day task work, we can sometimes lose sight of the big picture. And um, the important things like measurable outcomes, creative collaboration, and creating the minimum viable product can kind of get lost in the shuffle. So luckily, that's where Lean UX comes into play. Uh, it is a process that's already built into Agile, and it can be used to build great products that measure, um, that meet our users' needs and business goals while maximizing resources and minimizing waste. So there's a few different types of Agile. Before we get into Lean UX, let's briefly talk about what we're calling traditional Agile. With traditional Agile, the projects start from a feature request. Um, it places emphasis on communication and we can quickly respond to change. It also focuses on delivering complete and functional software. So while this, um, so a, a traditional right. Agile workflow can look like this. Um, a stakeholder makes a request um, to, for a feature to be built. <coughs> A little bit of discovery can be done to understand the feature and how to implement it. And then the feature is designed based on the request and any discovery findings. After that, testing is done to ensure that it's a good feature and a good experience um, for our users. When the designs are in a good place, we then pass it off to the development team to build and ship. Now that all sounds like a great process, However, there are some pain points. The projects based on the feature request rather than the underlying problem that's needing to be solved. Research and discovery focuses mostly on validating the feature <coughs> instead of um, discovering and exploring the underlying user's needs. There um, isn't also a defined measure of success. So sometimes the goal becomes um, completing the project rather than achieving a specific measurement. Um, to know that it was successful. So lastly, sometimes teams can feel a little less engaged in a project when they aren't a part of the ideation and don't have a sense of ownership over the solution. So another type of agile is called lean agile, which adds a method of lean thinking to the agile process. Lean meaning something that is more efficient while creating less waste. In Lean Agile, the core objective is to focus on obtaining feedback as early as possible so that it can be used to make quick decisions. You aren't focused on detailed deliverables, but instead you're looking to produce changes that meaningfully improve the experience for your users and produce targeted results. So in Lean Agile, projects start from user needs. Um, it emphasizes measuring results and iterative improvements based on user feedback, and the focus is on delivering a minimum viable product or MVP as quickly as possible, which can be you know, different from traditional agile where you're focused on putting out a full and complete feature. Essentially, lean agile is about doing as little as possible to learn as much as you can, that more efficiency with less waste mindset. So now that we know more about some of the common approaches to Agile, let's talk about how we can use the Agile framework plus that more efficient, less wasteful mindset of Lean to improve our user experience work. This is a concept called Lean UX. So Lean UX is a methodology that is endorsed by SAFE and it addresses many of the pain points that traditional Agile can cause within user experience centric design and development teams. An overview from SAFE is that Lean UX is a process and it embraces lean agile methods and design thinking. It implements functionality in those MVP increments and determines success by 
measuring results against a benefit hypothesis. Lean UX is a very cyclical process uh, because it's focused on achieving your outcomes. So you would start with the benefit hypothesis, which you would create at the beginning of your project. You would go through rounds of collaborative design. You would build an MVP. Then you would put it out into the market to evaluate and learn from it and measure those results against your original benefit hypothesis. Essentially, Lean UX is a combination of tools and methods that when you understand them and when you use them, you can really get the awesome benefits of UX activities and design thinking to explore the problem that you're wanting to solve, plus lean thinking to make sure that you're building the right things, you know, things that are actually gonna solve for your users' needs, plus agile processes to make sure you're building the things right in an iterative approach. So let's look at how um, the, a project workflow could be created based on the ideologies of Lean UX. And we'll talk more about each of these steps uh, in depth, but at a high level, the first step would be to understand the user need. That's when your benefit hypothesis is created and your whole project is built upon that benefit hypothesis. The second step would be to define the opportunity that you have. So this is when you really want to understand the user need and also start defining the outcomes that you want to pursue. The third step would be to design the MVP. So the team works together to choose, design, and test solution ideas that have the best opportunity to achieve your project goals. Fourth would be shipping and testing. So the designs would be developed and then shipped and tested for, um, tested for analysis. And then you would monitor the results that you get and share those back with your team. And then finally, you would plan to optimize. If you haven't met your project goals, uh, you would uh, plan enhancement iterations that would come after. So the first step in the Lean UX workflow is user needs. Uh, we really need to gain an understanding of what our users require and desire from the product or service so that we can develop something that truly solves a problem and meets their demand. Similar to the scientific method, we can formulate a benefit hypothesis statement that outlines the potential benefits and the value to our users. So the benefit hypothesis would look like this. We believe this business outcome will be achieved if these users successfully attain this user outcome with this feature. So let's fill it in with an example. We believe more sales will be achieved if new customers successfully attain time savings with more robust product filtering options. Next, you'll begin defining your user needs and your desired outcomes, which can involve documenting metrics, conducting stakeholder interviews, and learning about your user and their jobs to be done. Understanding the problem space is really important to do before you begin ideating on solutions. Then outcomes can be defined using objectives and key results, things like um, conversion metrics, uh, time to complete tasks, ease of use. And the information that's learned throughout the whole definition step should again be shared with the team so that they will be able to also ideate together on solutions. So now that, so now that we've clearly identified our users' needs and defined our business outcomes, we can move on to step three, designing the MVP or the minimum viable product. The MVP is that first version of the product with just enough features to satisfy our early adopters. User testing an MVP um, design and prototype can quickly get ideas in front of our users to gather feedback and ensure that we're building a product that solves those users' needs before going into development. This initial feedback can really influence how we move forward and validate if we're headed in the right direction or if we need to pivot. In this step, sharing the designs and having collaboration with the team is really important. Collaborative design can be done in a few different ways. It can be pretty informal, and we can just have a conversation with a teammate, start asking questions, get together around a whiteboard, or if remote um, digital whiteboarding tools are available, anything that you can do to visually share ideas with each other. On the other hand, it could be really um, formal by holding a design sprint to kick off a project. And this is a really great way to bring the whole team together and get um, everyone's input from the beginning. All right, 
once your MVP is ready to go, then it's time to ship the product and begin testing to see if your solution is going to help you reach your goals. You'll want to plan for implementing the MVP design as well as any additional considerations needed for tracking analytics, A-B testing, or releasing additional enhancements incrementally. Uh, that can look like releasing a base page and then planning to add more complex components in later on. You want to keep your user needs and your benefit hypothesis in mind whenever you're making decisions. There are always changes that happen when you're going from the design to the uh, to development. That could be, you know, interactions you didn't plan for, the technical difficulties that you didn't know about. So just always keep your user needs and your benefit hypothesis, all your goals in mind when you are making any changes to your project scope or direction. And then you'll want to regularly monitor the performance of the new product through web analytics and user feedback tools. Uh, after your solution has launched, you still aren't done yet. Uh, this is when you plan to optimize. This can be another key mindset chain from the traditional agile flow when, again, projects are done once the full and complete feature has been launched to the market. Instead, in Lean UX to optimize, you'll want to compare the data, um, such as analytics and user feedback that you're collecting from your live solution with your project goals, those KPIs, um, and your benefit hypothesis to understand if your solution is solving for your user needs. If you have not met your goals, then you begin exploring enhancement ideas. And if you have met your goals, then your projects can be marked on or further enhancements can be planned. Uh, the important thing here is that being data-driven is really going to empower the team to understand their impact and make really important decisions. All right, quick recap on some of the benefits of Lean UX. Uh, projects are focused around solving for real user opportunities. It really creates a user-focused mindset. Everyone gets to collaborate through the ideation process and can feel more ownership of the, pro of the problem. It values outcomes over outputs. So projects are really data-driven and measured after launch to ensure that your goals are being met. Um, it allows for a faster speed to market when you're starting with an MVP. You can uh, learn quicker and it can lead to reduced design and development time. And also, it promotes continuous improvement. So the team can learn from the performance of solutions that you've launched and plan incremental enhancements. All right, so now that we know what Lean UX is and all of the benefits, how do we get started implementing it into our projects and start building for outcomes? There are four quick ways that we recommend to start working Lean. First, define the goals for every project. Second, plan for iterative work. Third, get the whole team thinking lean. And fourth, practice collaborative brainstorming. So let's break this down even further. Number one, defining the goals for every project. This will really set up your project for success. Practice creating benefit hypothesis, defining metrics, understanding how you will measure those results, and then how you will even know when your users are satisfied. Uh, defining a goal can be a part of the process no matter what project, um, the size of the project. Um, and you can use tools that, there are tools out there that can help you get started like the Lean UX Canvas. So the authors of the book Lean UX also created the Lean UX Canvas to help work through defining our goals. It helps us focus on the why, provides structure to our collaborations and decisions, and exposes any gaps in the problem that we're trying to solve. It also aids in shifting the conversation from outputs to outcomes. So on the left is the Lean UX Canvas with the eight boxes to be filled in. And then on the right is a step-by-step -step guide that I put together to help fill out the canvas. So each yellow box has a question that will prompt thoughts and ideas for filling out the canvas. So while this step needs a lot of thought and consideration, these tools will help make the process a little bit easier to complete. Second way that you can begin practicing Lean UX is to start planning for iterative work. You'll want to focus on how you can achieve the goals determined at the beginning of the project. Ask yourself, what's the least amount of work that we can do to achieve our desired outcomes? You'll want to start with an MVP and then also plan for those future enhancements in case the MVP doesn't meet your solution. And you can also utilize tools like idea mapping and dual track agile to categorize solution ideas and prioritize your enhancements. 
So let's take a quick look at these tools. Um, idea mapping and dual track agile can both help you get the most out of the Lean UX methodologies when you're planning a project. Uh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> All right, so we've seen this flow already, and some projects may be able to follow it in a pretty straightforward, linear fashion. For those cases, projects would start with the user need, would go through the period of definition, designing MVP, will be shipped and tested and optimized, and you would plan enhancements if you haven't met your goals. This can work well for projects that can be enhanced over longer periods of time or have fewer solution ideas but already have a pretty clear prioritization. Since enhancements in this flow, if you follow it linearly, wouldn't be planned until you've reached the optimization step. For more complex projects, however, or ones that have a lot of possible solutions, following this linear workflow uh, isn't necessarily gonna be the most efficient way to uh, start making progress towards your goals. So if you have a lot of many solution ideas, you can actually start by mapping, um, using idea mapping to categorize the options that you have. This is especially beneficial if your project has a lot of idea contributors like the team, business partners, stakeholders, especially if a lot of people have really strong opinions on how the work should be done. Uh, to map your ideas, you can start with a matrix like this and plot ideas based on criteria such as perceived risk and perceived value. The great thing about this activity is that the whole team can get involved and nudge ideas left, right, up and down on either axis based on their unique experience and expertise. So for example, let's say a solution idea uh, for a user need is to create a landing page with helpful information. A designer might start and say, you know, from my perspective, this idea can be around where the red dot is a little bit lower risk because maybe I know the landing page could be done with mostly existing components or templates that we have available. So from my perspective as a designer, this is lower risk because I'm not gonna have to do user testing on it or uh, custom design work. Then a business partner might say that they think the solution has good potential value because maybe they've been getting feedback on customer surveys that customers are really looking for this information. So between the designer and the business partner, this idea would fall into the develop now quadrant because their perspectives um, have let us know that it's potentially a high value and low risk. Oh, not so fast, the developer got here. And they say that it's actually really complicated and doesn't matter that they're components, a really crazy API has to be set up. So it's really risky and there's a lot of unknowns. Um, so now the idea is more in the start discovery quadrant because we know we need to do some research on it. Does this sound like familiar to anybody? <laughs> so uh, now we know that this idea should go through some discovery and by everybody contributing to this map, uh, we might have just saved some time and heartburn rather than if we had just stopped and said, this is ready to develop now. Another benefit is once all of your ideas are mapped on this matrix, they will basically already be prioritized for you. All right, so you have your ideas categorized, but how do you then convert them into an efficient workflow? At its most simple, the develop now quadrant can have ideas that shape your MVP, while the start discovery quadrant might have ideas that could be included in future enhancements if they make it through the discovery process. However, another added benefit to taking time to map your ideas like this is that you're perfectly positioned to utilize dual track agile, which is another tool, it's a modified workflow that helps improve efficiencies for larger or more complex projects. So dual track agile follows the same beginning and end steps as this more simplified Lean UX workflow but instead of taking one solution through the entire process before you're able to begin working on enhancements, Dual Track Agile actually splits the middle of the workflow into two tracks. So one for solutions that do need discovery, and one for solutions that, guessed it, do not need discovery. This allows you to conduct discovery on higher risk ideas at the same time that you're shipping, testing, and learning from MVP or lower risk ideas. In this flow, after your 
uh, user need would be defined, the team would then get together and generate ideas for how to solve the problem. This collection of ideas is essentially what we're gonna call the idea backlog. And the idea backlog should be then organized based on whether or not the solution needs discovery or not, which is why idea mapping can pair really perfectly with leading into this workflow, because all of your ideas would be categorized already. If an idea has um, risks or unknowns, if it needs exploration, then it would enter into the discovery track for UX or technical research, whatever it needs. Um, and then after discovery, if the idea is found to be viable, then it would be moved into the delivery backlog. Otherwise, it might be thrown out or saved for later. But it's just important to remember that discovery is not a time to be introducing new ideas. You really want to collaborate with your team and have those ideas already when you move to the next step. If an idea does not need discovery, that's where you see the fast track up at the top. So the idea would be fast track straight from the idea backlog into the delivery backlog, skipping the discovery step. By pairing uh, down ideas throughout these two tracks, your delivery backlog would only contain ideas that are most likely to solve for the user need. Plus, they will be ready for final designs and development. This great uh, workflow really enables a stream of high quality solutions and enhancements that can be released at a steady pace and you can continue iterating throughout this process as much as you need to until you're, you've reached your project goals. So now that we've learned how the discovery track fits into the process, let's go over some of the details. So typically the UX designers, project manager, project product owner, and the tech leads work together to determine the best of the best from the idea backlog. They determine which concepts are the most viable, desirable, and feasible for our users and the business. This all happens before any code is written, um, and it's used using the design thinking process. So by creating the MVP design and prototype along with user testing, we can ensure that those best ideas are the ones moving forward into the delivery track. third way you can start using Lean UX is to make sure that everyone is thinking lean within their roles on a project. For example, product owners can help define goals, create benefit hypotheses, and collect metrics and ideas from stakeholders. A Scrum Master can facilitate collaborative ideation sessions and ensure that Lean UX is integrating into the Scrum framework. Uh, stakeholders can identify user and business needs and share analytics and data with the team so that they can make those decisions. Uh, design development, BI, QA uh, can all collaborate on ideation. Um, all of those roles can design, plan, build that iterative approach, and then also make sure that you're keeping in mind all of the testing uh, considerations. And lastly, there are some UX activities that the team can do to practice collaborative brainstorming. So with project kickoffs, we can get the whole team together at the beginning to share our goals, the business requirements, and desired outcomes so that everyone can be informed when contributing to the ideas. So then the team can come back together again for idea mapping, collecting solution, solution ideas from the team and stakeholders and plotting them against their assumed value and risk to determine which ideas have the most potential to achieve the project goals. Project retrospectives are also a great space for including discussion about the goals and the results and to do a check-in on how the team feels about the outcomes. And we can't forget analytics. The team can uh, meet regularly to review how the work is performing, checking in to see and with if and when the goals have been met and um, if we need to make any future enhancements. All right, to wrap up, Lean UX is the process that embraces at Lean Agile methods and design thinking because the projects start from understanding our users' needs. Lean UX emphasizes that we're measuring results and making iterative improvements based on our user feedback. Um, and this can be done by delivering the MVP as quickly as possible. And with that, we thank you for joining us. Um, and we will take any questions that you may have and Stephanie is going to pass around the microphone so that our online friends can hear the question. <laughs> yep. All right. Any 
questions before we go? Um, my question was, when you're at the process of the user needs and you're getting that information, what, what kind of data are you guys sourcing? Like, where does the user needs come from? I would say from my experience, sometimes user needs can come from, like, analytics that you find. So if you can see that um, potentially there's, like, lower exposure rates to tools that you want users to be using, or um, if they're not, um, you know, converting in the way that you would like, you can start digging in and, you know, user testing is a great option or interviewing users to find what parts of the journey are, are slowing them down. Um, so yeah, really relying on metrics and analytics and user feedback too. So if you do have like a customer success team that can give you um, real feedback from the users, I'm just gonna keep saying get feedback from the users. <laughs> Um, yeah, and any method that you can, I think that's been what's helped me at least in the past. You have anything to add? Um, yeah, no, just um, the user testing is really important, like uh, getting in front of, um, for us, our producers, um, asking them kind of open-ended questions where they can just kind of explain what some of their pain points are um, to help us understand uh, what they're, where they're coming from day to day. I guess if you don't have user testing resources or access to your users, you can also, I like to pull coworkers over and have them go through a process and see, you know, what their pain points are or family members, you know, utilize other people to see where they're getting tripped up in a process. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if we need it, like, no pressure. <laughs> so, um, Typically when I think about UX, I think web design, which I feel like has been the guiding light of this whole discussion, but it seems like this framework can also be applied to other areas of tech or business. Have you guys seen that happen? Like, ha have you seen this framework be used in any of those instances? <clears throat> Had a frog in my throat, sorry. <laughs> I think your idea is right on track and it probably could be, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was a little too broad. <laughs> yeah. no, I feel like um, from what I've seen at least around working with different teams, oftentimes the biggest thing is not having measures of success or key milestones that you're working towards. Um, I think that's where like the having the mindset of just needing to ship features can be really detrimental. So, um, you know, Using, using the lean UX mindset, I think anybody could start shifting their focus to whoever their user is. Um, because even if you don't have like a designer on your team, you're still designing for a user. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think um, anybody can benefit from having you know the project goals, the benefit hypothesis for any type of work that you're doing, really. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. I didn't. I just didn't know if there was like if you'd seen that be applied in other scenarios, but uh, I, I agree with you. I think it could be. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I'd say, um, yeah, or at least around the teams that I've worked with, this concept is not really something that we've done a whole lot with, at least from, yeah, against my perspective. Um, so it's pretty new, but um, we'll report back if, if I see some, you know, updates. <laughs> Great. So the question is, lean and agile thinking seem to be something a lot of people in the tech industry are familiar with, but a little less with design thinking from the development side. What's the benefit, what's the biggest benefit you've seen in incorporating the design thinking aspect with lean UX? Um, design, no. yeah, I was gonna say designing the MVP, the minimum viable product, I think is really important. Um, getting it out into um, our users' hands or um, user testing it right away um, and getting that feedback will really help us know how to plan moving forward. Um, so um, just using the empathize with our users, uh, design, define that goal and then uh, the MVP and then 
uh, testing. Testing is key. <laughs> I would just add to that too, um, I kind of say this maybe a lot when I'm working with teams is that even if you don't have a designer, you're designing. <laughs> you know, so everybody should really be using design thinking um, when they are creating a product, even if you don't um, have a designer or if you're not using like a design process, you're still ultimately designing a product. I have a microphone and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned or you, d you, you talked in, your, um, in the process about the definition phase. If you could maybe talk about how, uh, what the outcomes of that are, what kind of documents, what kind of um, material you end up with in your definition to kind of move yourself along. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Um, so for a recent project I've been working on, in our definition phase, we came up with a benefit hypothesis, and I can't repeat it now verbatim, I can't remember it that well. But you know, through the benefit hypothesis, we were able to identify what users we wanted to focus on, and um, the metrics that we were wanting to see um, from our project. Um, so like in our example, it was you know around wanting to um, increase the amount of users getting um, quotes would be an example. So um, you could define that you want to focus on um, you know users who have just come to the site for the first time. So then you would have defined that you want to look at that you know one audience. Um, you would define your metrics. So like maybe you want to increase quotes uh, quote starts by two percent. So through the benefit hypothesis, you already have a few metrics that you can start focusing on. Um, and then other things that I've defined is uh, like using current analytics to find opportunities um, for possible solutions. So documenting some of the key analytics can be valuable within the definition phase. Um, do you have anything to add? Um, oh, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to mention also the Lean UX Canvas is a really good way to um, get everything onto like one sheet of paper um, and kind of lean on that once you have it filled out. Um, it's really helpful to, because each quadrant has like the business outcomes, the user needs, um, the benefit hypothesis. Um, so that document is uh, something that you can really rely on. Business requirements is a good call out too. <laughs> Technical limitations. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks, everyone.